Denmark is a Nordic country in Northern Europe. It is also part of the Scandinavian countries and actually is the southernmost Scandinavian state. There are a total of 443 named islands that belong to Denmark. Nevertheless, there are many more islands that are not even named. It only shares a border with Germany, but also is connected to Sweden through a 15 km long bridge tunnel. As of its constitution, Denmark is a unitary state that consists of the Dane motherland north to Germany, as well as the two autonomous territories called the Faroe Islands and Greenland. So even though Denmark seems to be quite a small country, sitting somewhere north to Germany, it actually is the world's 12th largest state, if you include Greenland and the Faroe Islands, with a total area of about 2.22 million square kilometers. However, if we only consider the Danish mainland, then it is just the world's 130th largest country and about the same size as Switzerland, the Netherlands or Estonia. The official language of Denmark is Danish. Faroese, Greenlandic and German are recognized regional languages of this country. Over 75% of Denmark's population is Christian and about 20% do not identify with any religion. Its largest metropolitan regions are Copenhagen with about 1.15 million inhabitants, which by the way also is Denmark's capital city, followed by Aarhus, Odense and Alborg. In total, Denmark is home to about 5.8 million people. Denmark is very urbanized since every fourth Dane lives in the metropolitan region of Copenhagen. Denmark is famous for its happy population, for the Danish company Lego, for the many bicycles in its cities, for its history, especially the Vikings, for the Tivoli amusement park in Copenhagen, as well as for the Danish monarchy. But as we will find out soon, Denmark has much more than that to offer. The flag of Denmark shows a white Scandinavian cross on a red background. It is probably the oldest flag in the world and unchanged since its introduction. Many Scandinavian and Nordic countries have the Scandinavian cross in their flag. There is a legend worth knowing about the flag of Denmark. In the early 13th century, the Danish king Valdemar Seir led his army on a crusade in what is now Estonia. During a battle in 1219, the Danes were losing when suddenly a red banner with a white cross fell from the sky. As a result, the tables have turned, the Danish army won and Denmark got its flag. This flag is still in use today, which means that it is over 800 years old. The national animal of Denmark is the swain, while the daisy is its national flower. In spite of the fact that Denmark is part of the European Union, people do not pay with the euro, but instead they kept the Danish crown. Even though Denmark had the possibility to use the euro as their currency, a people's referendum in the year of 2000 rejected exchanging the crown for the euro. Denmark is the world's 36th largest economy, with most of the GDP generated in the services industry. Its main industries are wind turbines, pharmaceuticals, chemical products, food processing and the shipbuilding industry. It ranks fourth worldwide in the Ease of Doing Business Index of the year of 2020, which means that Denmark is only topped by New Zealand, Singapore and Hong Kong. Denmark also has some oil reserves in the North Sea. But production has consistently declined since recent years. Denmark has invested heavily in wind farms, which is why 42% of domestic electricity consumption was generated by wind power plants in 2015. Another fact worth knowing is that most of Denmark's land area is characterized by flat, arable land. Denmark is a country with one of the highest percentages of arable land in relation to the total area of the country. Just like Poland and Ukraine, Denmark's land area is very suitable for agriculture production. Denmark's main export partners are Germany, Sweden and the UK, while its main import partners are Germany, Sweden and the Netherlands. Later in this video there will be an interview with Maria from the YouTube channel Art and Beauty Freak. Maria was born and raised in Sweden, but also lived in the Philippines and the USA and now lives in Denmark. Maria will talk about her journey as well as provide useful information to everyone who is interested in moving to Denmark. If you have an idea which country I should cover next, please let me know down in the comments. 
This video is part of a video series that covers informative facts and the migration procedure of many countries around the globe. I've created dedicated videos for countless countries worldwide. You can find the playlist linked in the description below. But let's return to Denmark. What are the main upsides of moving to Denmark and what needs to be considered? As of the 2019 UN report, Denmark ranks 66th among the countries with the largest foreign-born population. About 722,000 people living in Denmark were not born there but moved to this country during their lifetime. The largest foreign-born populations are the Turks, followed by the Poles, the Syrians and the Germans. But what are the main upsides of moving to Denmark? Let us first take a look at the landscape of Denmark. Denmark is a very flat country, characterized by fertile soils and occasionally small forests. The coasts are also flat and sandy. On average, Denmark has an altitude of just 31 meters above sea level and the highest point, Molehoi, is only 170 meters above sea level. Denmark has hundreds of islands, most of which are not even inhabited. In Denmark, you are never more than 52 kilometers away from the sea. This of course does not apply to Greenland. So if you enjoy being by the sea, then Denmark might be just the right country for you. With a coastline of 7314 kilometers, Denmark offers more than enough space for all activities that are related to the sea. Just like the other Scandinavian countries, Denmark has a strong welfare system. An example of this is the maternity leave, which is a full year for both parents together. The parents can decide for themselves how they want to split the leave between them, but in total it should amount to 365 days. Maternity leave is not as long as in Sweden, where it is at 480 days for both parents, but compared to other countries, one year of maternity leave is already pretty long. Education is free of charge and even if you lose your job, you won't end up on the streets. Furthermore, health costs are covered by the state. So if you ever get sick considerably, then you won't have to fear bankruptcy. However, this also comes with some downsides, for instance extremely high tax rates. The next upsides are the high level of security as well as the great public transportation infrastructure. As of the Numbeo Security Index, Aarhus is Denmark's most secure city, ranking 17th worldwide. An interesting fact is that on average just one person gets killed by the police annually. As in the Netherlands or in Belgium, the bicycle is used by a big chunk of the population to commute. More than 50% of the Copenhageners cycle to work every day. Maybe this is caused by the fact that Denmark is such a flat country? Next comes the Danish culture and history. Apparently some Danes live in houses that are older than even the country of Denmark itself, which is quite impressive. Even today, brick is a domestically produced, inexpensive and durable building material that is often used in Danish architecture. Denmark is also known for its hygge, which is a Danish word for a mood of coziness and comfort combined with feelings of wellness and contentment. The word hygge is a core part of the Danish culture and a great upside for you in case you prefer a cozy, relaxed and peaceful attitude towards life. Culture also includes the cuisine, which contains traditional dishes such as morebrot, kartoffler, which are caramelized potatoes, stacked flyesk mit persilesovs, risalamande, frikadeller and other cakes, puddings and potato and meat dishes. Considering all these upsides, it is not surprising that the Danes are the world's second most happy people. As of the Global Happiness Report of 2020, Denmark ranks second worldwide in terms of happiness, only topped by Finland. Last but not least, the geographic location of Denmark in Europe is another advantage. Apart from having Germany and Sweden close by, you can also visit many other European countries in short travel time. But what does it cost to live in Denmark? If you live off 3000 US dollars a month in Houston, Texas, you'll need about 4050 US dollars for the same quality of life in Copenhagen. This means that the cost of living in Copenhagen is about 35% higher than the cost of living in Houston. On average, the Danes earn 57,000 euros or about 70,000 US dollars annually, which makes Denmark rank 11th worldwide, following Ireland and followed by Singapore. 
But in spite of all these upsides, there are also some drawbacks that you will need to consider when moving to Denmark. As mentioned before, taxes are one of Europe's highest. Even though taxes are lower than in Sweden or Finland, Denmark probably is not the right place for you in case you want to save some money on taxes. Furthermore, Denmark's nature is not as diverse as the nature of other countries. Denmark is an incredibly flat country, which at least for me personally would be a downside. And as just mentioned, living costs are very high. So it doesn't hurt to accumulate some savings before moving to Denmark. Let us continue with interviewing Maria. Maria, when did you move to Denmark and which city did you move to? Hi, hey, so I'm Maria and excuse me the rain it's always raining in denmark for the past four years i've been living in the philippines and i recently moved back in may of this year to copenhagen where i am right now why did you choose denmark so the reason for me choosing denmark to move back to denmark is actually due to the current situation we are all in the pandemic my original plan was since I was in the US recently visiting uh, my parents, I was gonna go back to the Philippines where I lived. But due to the current pandemic, my family was afraid of me going to, back to the Philippines. So they were like, it's safer if you go back to Denmark. Since I'm a Swedish citizen, it's not really hard for me to go back to Denmark. And I lived here before. So all of the documents I need and paperwork and stuff like that was easily accessible when I got here. And I don't need a visa or anything like that. So it's a bit different for me uh, coming here. Obviously, if you're from another country, you're gonna have to look into it more than I did. For me, it was just like, I just moved here, just like that. But obviously, if you're from another country, you're gonna have to do more research on, you know, whatever visa you would have, you would need to come here. And the government here is also very good at taking care of uh, the people here. So it was quite easy for me to come back here. When I got back here, uh, there was some thing things I had to figure out again and I had to acquire different types of, you know, the yellow card, which is the health, uh, the health card that they use here and also the main ID. So there were some things I had to figure out, but it was relatively easy and quick. What do you enjoy most about your life in Denmark? The thing I enjoy the most is possibly the safety. Um, like nothing happens, <laughs> nothing bad really happens here. Uh, you're safe for the most part. I mean, healthcare is for free. So I feel like next to Sweden, which is where I grew up, Denmark is possibly the next safest country to live in. Um, there's always like police going around, checking if everything is safe. There is, you know, it's free health care. So you don't have to worry about the cost. And I'm an accident prone, so I don't have to be afraid if I get into an accident that I'm gonna have to spend tons of money because it's free here, thankfully. Another thing I love about Denmark is the freedom I get. Because the country is so tiny, I'm able to just walk everywhere. Because I live in Copenhagen, everything is accessible by foot. Or you could also take a bike or public transportation, which is not that expensive. I love that I'm able to just travel wherever I want to go and I don't have to drive. I don't have to drive. I can just walk or bike or take the bus or train. So it's really easy to get around. Another thing I would say is it's very low on the drama level here. Like the news aren't as dramatic because as I said, it's a very safe country so you're not stressed out about you know politics or whatever is going on in the world you just feel really safe it's almost like you're in a bubble here in Denmark I feel like what do you miss most about the Philippines and Sweden what I miss the most about Sweden is probably the people uh, you would think that Swedes and Danes were like are the same people basically have the same personality they don't <laughs> they don't Swedes are very friendly, very warm, um, and always super welcoming. Like whenever I go there, everyone are always like smiling at you when you walk past them. When you go to grocery stores, they always say hi to you, they welcome you. So I really love that and I miss that a lot. Uh, because in Denmark, they tend to be more like closed off, uh, I would say. Um, and then also, Obviously, I miss the food there. I mean, I grew up there, so it's always gonna be my home. I miss 
the food i miss how big it is it's quite big compared to denmark and you know the nature it's gorgeous in sweden so i do miss that i also miss the language hearing the language it's just such a soft sweet language to listen to it's just so cute and i miss hearing it Sweden is right next door basically um, but I don't get to go there as often as I would like to. When it comes to the Philippines I also miss the people because in the Philippines they're happy no matter what like even if we're in a pandemic they're always just happy like you just feel instantly happy when you're there and they're super welcoming. They will they treat tourists really well they will take care of you and they will feed you food and the food there oh my goodness i miss the food i miss the malls the beach there's so many beautiful beaches in the philippines that i miss a ton the weather it's always hot sometimes i don't like when it's too hot but i do miss the weather because here it's always raining you know i also miss how they treat their customers like kings and queens in the philippines uh, when you go into a grocery store they will treat you as if you're royalty they will take care of you like crazy um, which they don't do here <laughs> what advice would you give people who are interested in moving to denmark a tip would be definitely uh, bring an umbrella because it's raining all the time no i'm joking if you're moving here make sure you have a lot of contacts because that's the only way you're gonna get a job uh, here in Denmark. You need to know a lot of people. Uh, it's gonna be easier for you. And even if you have a good education, like my mom had a good education, but it was still hard for her to get a job, for me to get a job. It's, it's not impossible, but you feel like it is. They usually hire people they trust. So you need a contact. And if you're gonna come here to study, that would be a great idea because they love it when you studied in Denmark. Like they want you to have a Danish education and they also want you to know Danish. So make sure to learn Danish because you can get a job here without knowing Danish, but it's gonna be very hard, very hard. So you need to learn Danish. And then when it comes to finding a place to live, you have to have a place to live before you move here or else it's gonna be really hard on you so whether that's an airbnb or something you just as a temporary thing and then um it obviously depends it's hard to give advice if i don't know where you you're from because it depends on each country like if you're 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 in eu if you're an eu citizen it's easy for you to come here and move here like for me i could easily just you know get an apartment but it's expensive so save up a lot of money i don't have an apartment i'm living with my grandma's friend uh, we're living with her so it's roomies is something you need to think about you need roomies because if you're especially gonna move to copenhagen it's very expensive so save up money <laughs> when it comes to making friends here um they usually get you know you usually get friends here if you like at the workplace, at school, um, but mostly at parties because they love to party. I don't party, so I don't have friends. <laughs> All my friends are online. So yeah, there's lots of things to think about, but overall, like I would definitely recommend coming to Denmark first before you move here so you can get to know the place if you really want to move here. Yeah, I hope you guys come to Denmark. It's a gorgeous country. I'm so sorry that it's raining right now, so I can't really show you guys that much. Thank you for having me on here. And if you guys want to see more of Denmark, then feel free to go to my channel, Art and Beauty Freak. I feature Denmark a lot on there. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Maria, for taking time to join this interview. Please make sure to check out her YouTube channel linked in the description below for more informative videos about her life in Denmark and also in the Philippines. If you enjoy lifestyle videos and vlogs, you should definitely go check out her channel. But what needs to be done in order to move to Denmark? For residents of a country that is part of the European Union, moving to Denmark will be no big deal. However, if you are planning to study, work or live in Denmark permanently, you will need a visa if you are not a citizen of a Nordic country, not a citizen of a country that is part of the European Union 
or not a family member of a European Union national. In case this applies to you, please check out the link in the video description where you will find more information regarding the different visa types that Denmark has to offer.